Fear and Hunger is a horror game with roguelike and JRPG elements. It also has necromancy. This game is violent and also has a lot of adult themes like nudity, self-mutilation, insanity, substance abuse, and sexual violence. It's also extremely difficult. If you're not into any of that, then don't play this game. That said, I don't think this game is disgustingly violent. For example, I really hate the Saw movies, they're just way too gory for me, and I don't enjoy that type of violence at all, but I can play this game just fine. So far the violence has been all about limb dismemberment, as you fight enemies you hack off their limbs, and they do the same to you. I also got tied down to a torture table by a madman, and he hacked all my limbs off as well as my private parts, but it's not that graphic. He swung his dagger and then the limb disappeared with a little splash of blood. If you're unsure, I'd recommend you play the demo. You can download it from itch.io and try it out. This video will also contain some very minor spoilers because I want to discuss some of the cool necromancy things you can do. But anything I spoil won't be something you wouldn't discover in the first few playthroughs anyway. And I mean like the first few times getting killed. You can choose one of four classes, but for necromancy, the one we want is the Dark Priest. When you choose him, you get a little quiz on your background. This determines your starter skills. Depending on your choices, you'll end up as either a necromancer or a bugmancer. Necromancers can of course raise corpses into ghoul and skeleton minions, whereas bugmancers can talk to and control insects. There may be more undead minions, but so far I've only encountered skeletons and ghouls. You start out alone and very weak. You have to manage your hunger and sanity. Food restores hunger, and drugs like alcohol, tobacco, etc. restore your sanity. As you walk around the dungeon, you can get companions like this little girl. She's quite weak, but she adds an extra attack per turn, which helps out a lot. You need all the help you can get in this game. Combat is turn-based, a bit like Pokemon. You attack, or use a skill or item, or run away, and then the enemy has their turn. You can hack away their limbs, making them less able to harm you and easier to hit, or you can try to go for a direct kill by lopping off their head. The more damaged the enemy is, the more chance you have of successfully lopping their head off. Some enemies can fight without a head though. As an example of the sexual violence in this game, you might have noticed a tree trunk sized ding dong hanging between the legs of these prison guards. I blurred it out for YouTube, but it's there. If you're defeated by one of these prison guards, he'll throw you in a cell and do unspeakable things to you in there. Good news though, you can actually cut his pecker off and deny him his fun, but then he'll just kill you instead, so it's not really all that helpful. Unfortunately, not every enemy can be reanimated. The first enemies you'll encounter are these mutant prison guards, and these guys can't be reanimated. If you come across an insane prisoner, you can reanimate these into ghouls. A ghoul is a pretty lousy combatant, even worse than the little girl, but he serves well as a meat shield and a distraction in combat. The ghoul can't use any equipment either, so if he does manage to successfully land a hit, it will only do a pitiful amount of damage. A better use of the ghoul is to take him to the ritual place and marry him. If you marry the ghoul, you'll have sex with it and merge with it. This turns you into some kind of ghoul-human hybrid. This hybrid is much better able to cope with fear, and is also stronger than the Dark Priest, so it's a pretty good deal. Much further into the dungeon, you might come across a skeleton. Unlike the ghoul, the skeleton can equip armor and weapons, and actually does very well for himself in combat. I'm not sure how many party members you can ultimately have in the game, but I suspect it's about four. If you're very lucky, you'll be able to get the little girl, the ghoul, and a skeleton in your party. I think this is a good game, it's reasonably priced and very difficult. It also has interesting lore, and overall it's just an interesting game. But I've got a few bones to pick with it. Firstly, it's one of those games where you can't save whenever you want to. You need to find a special book to save your progress, or a special bed deep in the dungeon, and sleep on it. These are all pretty rare and few and far between, so you'll spend a lot of time redoing everything you already did before, if you end up dying. I don't mind this so much because it's part of the difficulty, but it's very frustrating if the game bugs out on you. I got a bug where I couldn't close my inventory, and so I was stuck. 
I had to ult F4 out of the game and start over. This was very annoying because I'd gotten quite far and was doing pretty well. Secondly, there's RNG on a lot of stuff in this game, including the necromancy. Whenever you want to perform necromancy on a corpse, there's this coin flip mechanic. If you fail the coin flip, you lose 30 sanity and the necromancy fails. You can repeat this again and again, but if you're unlucky, you'll waste all your sanity trying to resurrect a corpse and have absolutely nothing to show for it. Your sanity can only be restored by alcoholic drinks and drugs, which are all finite, so you can blow it all trying to get a minion and then be screwed. Although I like this game a lot and I'm having fun with it, it's not really a very satisfying minions game. Minions aren't plentiful, the corpses you find are few and far between, and whether you get any minion at the end of it is dependent on this damn coin flip mechanic. This means you'll only have a couple of minions, more likely you'll have one minion or no minions. The minions also aren't very useful. The skeleton minion is the only one that's really helpful in a fight. Although, as I said before, in this game you really need all the help you can get. So even this crappy ghoul minion that can barely fight at all can be useful as a meat shield. It's better if the enemy hits him instead of you. On the bright side, the minions are permanent and the caster is quite squishy. I've decided to score this game on craftability as well, because these minions can be used in rituals in a variety of interesting ways. Marrying the minion and merging with it is only one possibility. You can also sacrifice a minion, which I haven't tried yet. I'll leave you to discover what that does. And there's a few other things you can also do. In conclusion, the game is good, but not really because of the minions. The minions are fun, but if you're looking for a minions game, this probably isn't it. If you're looking for a horror game with some necromancy on the side, then this game might be good for you. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has helped you find something fun to play. I've got more videos on necromancy stuff coming soon.